Okay, so welcome to part five. Um, now we're going to look at exporting all of this out into Blender. So we're to export all the textures and some of the mesh maps to work with in Blender. So I'm going to go down here to file, then down to export textures. And then by default, um, Painter will set you to a system folder. I'm going to actually navigate to my folder structure here where I have some textures. A texture folder so i'm going to go here paste this texture folder i'm going to set it in exports too and i'm going to select that folder um, i'm going to use the output template pbr metallic roughness i'm going to keep the all of these settings as they are um, the one thing i want to check is the output templates um, these are all the templates and the one we're working with in settings is pbr metallic roughness so we go to output templates and then on the left select pbr metallic roughness um, I don't want an emissive map, so I'm going to press the X on this one. Um, the normal map is this grey box here, and if I look on the right side, it's set to normal direct X, and I actually want the open geo. So to fix that, I'm just going to right click here, uh, I'll left click actually and click clear channel, and then I'm going to click on the open geo on the converted maps on the side and drag this over and drop this into the channel and select RGB channels. So now I have an open GL with like a, a dark red color and I have the same dark red color in the normal channel here. I can rename this normal open GL. Um, I don't want to mess with the rest of the naming. And um, metallic, I want the roughness, I want the base colors. I'm going to take those. So this is all correct. And then I'm going to go back to settings and um, this is now going to export 40 texture, image textures into this folder. So I'll click export and now Painter will run through and export everything. It's done this by default at 2K because the working resolution we've got is 2K. So all these files came out at 2K. If I want to export this at a higher resolution, I can go back to output template, uh, back to settings. Um, I can choose a different, um, output so I could make a new folder here and call this 4K. Um, open up the 4k folder select that one and under size this is now based on texture set size so this texture set if we look on the side here under size is set to 2048 so that's what the working texture in painter is which is fine to work with but we can export this at 4k so if i drop this menu down we could actually go all the way to 8k but that's overkill in my opinion at this point so for now we'll just do 4k so i'll set this to 4096 and press export again and now Paint is going to run through the same thing as before and just export everything as a 4096 4K resolution. So we've got both of those things that we could work with in Blender if we want for some things. For some reason, we might want to have a 2K if our render time becomes too fast with a 4K Mac. So now Paint is just exporting everything out. It does take longer at 4K, you can see, compared to the 2K export. Um, and when this is all done, we're going to head over to Blender. So here we are in Blender. And now if I look in my sports folder i have a series of image textures set to 2k for my um my jacket my pants and all the, the garments that we're looking at and then if i go into the 4k i have the same thing again set as a 4k set of textures um what we want to do now is take the geometry that we have so if i go to my geometry folder um we want to work with the thick look that we have and we want to import that into substance uh, into blender so I'm going to copy this folder directory from my file is saved. I'm going to click on the cube and press X to delete it. Um, again, if you've not used Blender before, I've got a previous tutorial that I made on introducing you guys to Blender, textures, cameras, and lights. So I'll link that here and please check that out if you've never ever used Blender before. Um, but I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing. So file, import, and then select... Um, with front obj i'm going to paste my folder link here and i'm going to select thick look because we exported different options for this look as we worked in so this is now imported into blender and i'm going to press the key next to the number one to the left of the number one on the keyboard i don't know what it's called but it's got a little comma um it's that and then hit view selected and now we kind of zoom into our uh jacket and our our entire look here um, to start adding the textures into this, I'm going to right click on this divide here. So this divide we can, you know, set our display how we want. I'm going to right click here and click vertical split and I'm going to split this about in half. Zoom in on the left side by rolling my mouse wheel. 
And on the right side, I want to go here into Shader Editor. So I'll click this icon in the middle of the screen here next to Object Mode to the left. Drop down and go into Shader Editor. And now I'm in Shader Editor. Um, if I go to the right side of the screen, if I select my object, I go to the right side and I click this red circle. I have in the top of the screen here all of my material slots. So I'm just dragging this divider down so we see everything. And I'm just going to fix this up before we start to do anything. So anything called material, I'm going to shuffle into the same slot because I know that these are all the um, metal pieces of the zips. So I just select the bottom one and I press the minus button and it will shuffle them all into the same material slot. Um, we can visualize this in the viewport if I scroll this up. If I go down in this shader setting, right down to the bottom and I look at view display, I can change the viewport color to say bright green. And you'll see now in the viewport, this is all metal, is all green. This is only the viewport color. So if I go into the shaded view, which is in the middle of the screen, if you look at the the, the second icon in on the left, the circle, it's called viewport shading. If I go into viewport shading, everything is still white because this is only the viewport color. This is the color of the material. So if I set the color of the material to red, we'll see all of these guys are red. So this is how you can identify in shaded mode, in um, viewport shading. If it's got a color, you can assign it a viewport color as well as a material color. Just a, a, a tip there. Um, again, this metal is the metal pieces in my zip. So I'm going to shuffle this down one more time so that even the uh, um, edges of the zips have a color. So I, again, if I go to viewport display, I could just add another color back in here and I see everything now. It, this is all my metal selection. Everything is in one selection except the buttons on these jeans. So I will fix that by taking this material here. I'm just going to, again, I know that this is a something that's not a fabric because all my fabrics have names. Clo has named all of these with the fabric name that they were in Clo, but everything that's called material is a trim or a stitch or something that's not a fabric. So I'm going to shuffle this all the way to the bottom by using the arrows. And then I'm just going to hit minus and move this into the metal slot. And now um, my pant buttons also have the same metal material. So this is all metal. Um, this is set up with different materials now. So if I look at this in uh, the shaded view for the material preview and I look at jacket and in base color I add green, I know that this is controlling my jacket. So this is how we're going to start to set up the materials. We've, we've fixed all those extra material slots by deleting them and now we are ready to um, import the texture maps that we had in uh, Substance Painter. So the way we're going to do that is select the material that we want to work with and look in the node space. Um, I'm going to press N on the keyboard and it will move in and out this side menu. I'll just press N to get rid of it. And then if you use the middle mouse button you're on your wheel, you click that, you can kind of drag around this space. And if you roll the mouse wheel in and out, you can zoom in and out. You might not see it, so you have to like have a little look and then you'll find the node. Um, the first thing we want to check is go to edit on the left side, edit preferences, and then add-ons. Search here for Wrangler, W-R-A-N-G-L-E-R. -E Node Wrangler should be activated. If this box isn't checked, check this box. This is gonna make our life a lot easier. So make sure Node Wrangler is working. Um, check that in the add-ons, in the preferences, and then go to your shader. So this green thing is the shader. These are the options we've got with the shader. Um, Roughness value, we can go down, make it shiny, go up, make it rough. This is all going to be controlled by the image textures that we had. So click on the shader and press Control, Shift, and T, and we will have a uh, folder window, a window open up. I'm going to navigate to my textures folder and go to exports, and I'm going to start with the 4K exports, okay? So what I want to do now is organize this by name and see that I have base, height, metallic, normal, and roughness all so I'm going to press Control and A and select everything right now. Shift, Shift select all the way to the bottom and click Principal Texture Set. This will automatically set up our node, node tree in a way that reads the textures. But it's now going to load everything on the left side and we see that this is immediately correct. And that's because of how this Node Wrangler add-on is reading the UDIM tiles that we've created. So some of this is right and some of this is is wrong and we can fix that very easily in these settings here. So to 
spin. This is our texture mapping, which is set to one because we have one UV tile. Um, this would be where you could change tiling if you wanted to increase tiling. Um, these are our image texture inputs that uh, Node Wrangler has, has read from the folder. So the base color, metallic, roughness, normal, and displacement. This is our normal control and this is our displacement control. Um, to fix first the base color, click on this white folder icon. You'll open up the folder, navigate to base color 1001, select that and press open image. Um, the texture will reload and this will be now correctly applied. It doesn't look correct because we've still not fixed the normal map and the ones underneath it, but this is actually applied correctly now. So I'll do the same thing. Metallic, click the folder icon, scroll to metallic 1001, open image. Then this will load, we go to roughness. 1001, open the image. Normal, again, I now select the normal open gel 1001 and open the image. And now that bit of normal map is fixed. And then I go again to height for the last one and click 1001 height and click open image. Um, everything's fixed, but this is still not set up correctly because for displacement, I want the color space to be non-color because it's a black and white map. For the normal map, I want the input to be non-color. So look at the difference between now and the this being set to non-color. Um, this is now how the normal map is being correctly read before it wasn't. So this set it to non-color. Roughness also color space non-color because it's a black and white image. Uh, metallic we as well just go down here and set to non-color. And in base color, we leave this as sRGB because we want this to be read as a color image. So now we've imported the jacket texture and this is working. Um, the one thing that we should note about this is if I go into the... If I want you to look at displacement, this is not currently using displacement. So we can visualize that if we go into render view. So if I go to the icon that looks like the back of a camera, I see that my render engine is EV. So if I go on the left side to viewport shaded render view, which is in the middle of the screen on the left side, click the render view, and this will take us into the EV render. So this is EV, this is real time, and it's it's not path traced, it's not the highest quality of rendering we can do, but it's quick. So it's loading almost immediately. And if if I, with my split view now, I go to the middle of the screen and I click this circular icon and draw menu down again. And I change this back to 3D viewport. I'm now in the, I can now visualize my viewport on the side. And if I click this light on the side, if I like select the light in my uh, outliner and press G with my mouse in the right side of the screen, I can grab this light and I can move it around. So you see now I can move this light around this jacket and I can start to visualize how this texture is going to look. If I press Shift and D with this light selected, I can duplicate. So Shift and D for duplicate, and I can move another one to the other side of the room and drop that down by clicking. And then if I choose the green light bulb on the property editor on the side here, and I increase the radius of this, I can create a bigger light, and that should have a kind of a softer shadow. So again, if I choose the other light, this smaller one, and I increase the radius of this, um, the shadows become softer. So I can kind of put it about one meter maybe and now i can look at this texture see how this is coming together this is still in ev so this is quite a quick rendering solution if i want to push this into cycles to really visualize the the surface of this i need to go to edit preferences go to system and check that you're running if you've got nvidia graphics cards check that they're both selected check that you're running on optics instead of cuda because optics should be ray tracing so if you have rtx nvidia graphics cards use optics turn off your cpu so uncheck the cpu box here if this is selected and just run on the graphics cards and then in the render engine on the side so the back of the camera click there render engine choose cycles um this will turn the rendering to render and it's running on the cpu by default but if i drop this down and i click gpu um we should now visualize this uh, using just the graphics card so this is being rendered on my gpu now um, and we can see what this bump map is doing to our um, texturing here so it's very very strong um so i'm going to Select the center of the screen again, this icon in the middle. I'm going to 
change menu down to change the workspace and I'm going to go back into shader editor I'm going to click on the jacket and then edit the shading of this jacket material and in displacement this is set to 1 and if I set this to 0 0.1 and let the texture update we will have a much less intense usage of this bump map so I could even set this to 0 0.01 And have it it's still there but it's being used very gently and if I go over as well to the normal map I could set this down to maybe 0 0.7 to decrease a little bit the intensity of the normal map and the seam thicknesses don't seem so such large impressions right now before we made that adjustment we could see a bit of artifacts in the in the displacement map and also the thickness in that looked really strong we're not actually using displacement and i can show you how we know this so if we are looking with our jacket selected and we choose the red circle again to go into the materials space if i scroll down i can close this surface up so that it's easier to see i have a displacement menu but this displacement is literally just this displacement node this isn't actually my displacement setting that is in the settings icon here. So if you drop this menu down, you have a displacement option here, and this is set to bump only. Right. So I'm just going to quickly save this scene. Um, I'm going to just call the scene Leather Jacket. I'm saving it in the folder structure that I've created for this project, and I'll save the blend file. Um, I'm going to turn off uh, rendering for one second, so I'm going to press this white circle in the middle of the screen to go back to, uh, like this play view um in displacement here i'm going to turn displacement to displacement and bump um so now it's having a bump input and a displacement input you could have displacement only but i'm going to use both and then i'll turn back on my render view um, and we can start to see what this is doing to our mesh right now probably not a lot but immediately you will see there's kind of some stretching and impressions happening on the edges of these seams here and that's because the displacement is adding height and thickness into this i don't think this is necessary because we don't have the right kind of topology for displacement so you see this is is a problem here um this is as well because of how the edges are working and how they're unwrapped in in blender so i'm going to turn this back to just bump and stick to um just the bump texture at this point i think this is fine i think this looks good this has come out of substance and it's added a lot of detail to our model um what we can do now is if i go to shaded view and just i'm not viewing this with lights or rendering anymore i'm just viewing like a um a texture preview so what i can do now is take all of this and apply it to the other parts of this mesh but keep it in the materials because if i just had one material slot like i had in substance painter i could only update this texture and make changes to it if i then go back into substance painter adjust that layer that map that stack that we've had re-export the textures and then refresh everything in blender that's fine as long as these folder trees stay the same if i overwrite all these textures with a new export from substance blender will read those overwritten textures the next time the render engine opens so you can always overwrite all textures to update your look here but I want to keep these material slots separated so that I can really control each material for each part of the garment in Blender by itself. So the way I'll do that is I'm going to make a copy of this node tree. I'm going to select everything and press C, Control and C on the keyboard. You might have to press C a few times. Sometimes if you press Control and C once, it doesn't copy it. So do a few good presses of the C button. Go to trousers, highlight everything and press delete. Then press Control and V to, to paste our shader. And we now have the same node tree outlined in the trouser area of our um, our model. So this is going to build up uh, an editable material in each of these um, material slots now. For the t-shirt and the neck trim, I want to actually push those into the same slot. So I'll show you what I mean by this. So if I go to neck trim, I delete all of the, sh the items in there. So I highlight everything and press delete. There's no shader, so this will go to black because it has no shader information. I'll press Ctrl and V to paste those nodes from the other um, 
from the jacket into the neck trim. And if I go and look now at the neck trim, I should have my color and my normal map being projected. But I could take the t-shirt, I could press this minus button and that will shuffle the t-shirt slot into the neck trim slot. And now these will op operate as one slot. So this is just one slot now for the t-shirt rather than having a, a, an individual slot. And again, I could do that for all of these materials, but I'm not going to do that because I want to have separated controls. So for the lining, the lining, I could actually shuffle all the way to the top. If I move the arrows and I move the lining underneath the jacket with the arrows, and then I hit the minus button on lining, it will shuffle the lining up into the jacket. So my lining and my jacket is all one control now. My trousers are a separate control. My t-shirt is a separate one. The last one we can do is the zipper. Um, but again, you know what? This zipper, I'm going to move it up and I'm going to shuffle this into the jacket slot. So I'm going to move zipper up with the arrows. And then I'm going to hit the minus in this on the side and then I'm going to shuffle. No, I'm not. I went too far. Yeah. I'm going to shuffle now the zipper into the jacket slot and I'll move this back to the top. And now my zipper, my lining and jacket are all working from the same material outline, which is fine. And then the last one is the metal. And I'm not going to paste those nodes in here because I can just set up a very basic metallic shader in here without needing to read the image textures. So I'm going to slide up the metallic slider and I'm going to slide down the roughness slider and immediately I get this metallic look on the zippers and the the buttons. I'm just gonna move the base color down to like a light gray so that they're a bit darker. And that for now will do for my metallic pieces. So what I mean by separating these controls is now I think, okay, the jacket's red, it looks good, but I want it to not be red. So I could go back to substance, change the layers, re-export everything, come back into Blender, reset the textures. Don't need to do that. Select your jacket material look in your node tree and look at where the base texture is feeding into the base color and press shift and a on the keyboard and then search for an input and then actually search and then look for hue saturation you'll have a hue saturation volume you can drop that in the middle nothing's changed because the the controls are not being changed yet so if i zoom in on this and i look at set the value no let's look at hue and i change the hue to 0 0.2 my jacket's blue. I could change the saturation to 0 0.5. That was a soft blue. I could change the value to 0 0.25, make this dark, and now it's like a dark navy blue jacket. This factor determines how much of this hue saturation is being applied to this bit texture. So if I put the factor to zero, nothing is being applied. If I put the factor up a bit, it's all being applied. I'll keep this at one, but this very quickly, just by inputting this node, allows us to um, change the color the the saturation any anything about this base color we can change but we're still keeping all the detail from the the base color so that's one thing we can do if we want to change the roughness i can press shift a search for a color ramp so col and then we'll see color ramp in the top i can drop this ramp in the roughness and again nothing will happen because we've not changed any settings if i want this to be rougher I can click in the black side of this slider, click in the black color space in the bottom, and I can move this up to a white value. And you'll see on the left side, I, my jacket becomes rougher. Um, we can do this in the opposite direction as well. So if I choose the white side and I choose the white color space, and then I bring this down into a, a darker color, I can make this jacket really shiny and almost like plasticky in look. I'm just going to do the opposite. I'm going to bring the black up a little bit in the gray channel to make it look a bit drier. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is go to the trousers, press Shift and A, search for a hue saturation, put a hue in here, put my value down to 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And now they're kind of dark, almost black color. Um, I'll change the hue um to make them green and i'll bring the saturation down a bit so now i can very easily change the the look of this um the one last thing that we can do with the color ramp that's quite nice if i go to the neck trim and the t-shirt um color uh to the base color here i press shift and a and i search for a ramp 
I, I drop this color ramp in here and it will convert this to just black and white values. But now I can remap these values. And what I mean by that is if I take this white, I choose this color here, and then I put this to red, the white part of this image has now become pink or red or whatever I choose. And I can kind of push that in a bit by bringing this down, or I can push the black in a bit by bringing this up. So that can control like how these values are affecting each other. And again, for the black, I could remap this color up into the white color space, or I could put it into the green space. Um, but now I'm just going to keep it kind of black, I think. But then that allows us to remap the color values of this. So again, we don't need to make those changes in substance. We can just use some nodes in the Blender workspace to make that happen. So I'm going to save this with Control and S, and then just look at this in um, iRay, well, in Cycles Render. And it looks pretty nice to me. The pants might be a bit shiny. So if I go to trousers, I go shift a search for ramp. I drop this color ramp in the roughness space in the connection between roughness and roughness in the trousers. And I'll bring up this black side, choose the black color space, bring this value up. Um, this is easier if we're not in cycles mode. Bring this up so it's quite rough indeed, like that. And then go back into cycles. That's looking a lot better. Again, the lighting on this is not good, so I can change that in the 3D view part. I can, you know, grab this light, bring it around to the front. But we're going to set up some nice lights next. Um, but here we have everything we need for setting up the texture in Blender. In the next video, we'll set up some cameras, a little bit of an environment, some lights, and um, make some nice final renders of this uh, look that we've created.